to create a companion object, what you'll do is inside of your class, you'll type companion object. And then you can start typing the name of your function. So in this case, let's create a function called create user. It will return a new user. Uh, in order to do that, we'll actually need the first name and a last name. So we'll need that provided to us. That's not what we want, first name, and then we'll have last name. And then of course, what we'll do is we'll have this return a new user. And it's very simple, we'll just kind of new up the user with the first name and the last name. Now a companion object is a function or property that's going to be tied directly to the class or rather than to its exact instances. And we, it's very much like a static method you would see inside of something like Java. And a companion object is a singleton, so meaning that it's tied to the actual class itself. So what does that mean? Let's go take a look at this implementation here. You can do is here say user.createUser foo and then we'll say bar and we'll say val user and then what we can do here is we can just print line the user they'll say print the user and what we've done here is we've actually created a basically a static type of method attached to the user class so now you notice how i didn't create an instance of user i just called a method that was directly on the user class and that is going to be the create user method so let's see create user and we could treat this like a factory to create objects for us. Now we could go a little bit further too as well. And let's say that we had a, maybe we wanted to create a, a way to create a bunch of users. So we say create users. And then what we can do inside of here is say how many users we would like to create. We'll need to pass in the value. And what we're gonna do is return a list of users. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and create a basically a class level singleton variable. So we'll say foul users equals a mutable list of users. Now we'll be able to access that via the class. And what we could say here is for i in zero to the count, which meaning from count from zero up to the, the number provided count here, we want to add an item to the users list and we'll go ahead and say user and we'll just kind of do something first, first name and then we'll provide some type of value such as the index here. And then we'll do the same thing here, last name, and then we'll do something like the index as well. And uh, as you can see here, it says we can remove the curly braces, so we can do that here and here because we're just doing a very simple expression. And then of course, we'll return the users, which is just the, the member variable. So let's go take a look at how we would use this. So let's go over here, val users equals and we could say user.createUsers. So maybe you wanna have this to create a number of users or objects or one out of whatever type. And then we can say print line and then we'll actually print those users out. And when we run this, what we're gonna notice is that we see all of them printed on one line. And the reason for that is this is basically Kotlin's way of showing us, hey, this looks like some type of collection because we have a curly, a square bracket and a closed square bracket over here, open and closed square brackets. And this is the first element inside of our list. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So actually, if we're to make this a little bit easier to read, we can actually use one of the collection helper methods called for each. And it basically iterates over each item. And then inside of there, we can print off the item, which will be, it's called it by default. And if we run this, we'll see that we actually have them printed on all, on each individual line. But now the interesting thing is, we said, let's create five users. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the reason why we have six is because this range is starting from zero. So we could change this to count to count minus one, or we could just kind of make it simple saying, hey, go from one up to the count. So now if we run this again, we'll see that we only have one, two, three, four, five. Now we could count this up to 15, which is great. And we can go ahead and create 15 different users and it's all pretty simple to do. Now, also the cool thing is here as well, let's go ahead and comment this out, uh, is that we've now created our users, but perhaps we could say, you know, users two. So we'll create a new variable here. I'll say user.users. Remember, this is a property, it's a singleton property that's on the user class. So this, uh, this method, create users, actually modified that this list here by adding to it. Now, again, back here, we're not doing anything with the users. We're just kind of leaving it there. So technically I could just kind of get rid of it if I wanted to. And then I could say users and then I could say print line. You know, let's actually just go ahead and copy this up here to make it easier. I'll say users two. 
And of course that's not there. So let's say users to print line. And if we run this, what we'll notice is that the users object, of course, was populated via the create user. So now if I were to come up here and say zero, so don't create any users, it's gonna see like we have an empty basic list. We see foobar, that's this one up here. Uh, so if we were to you know get rid of this guy up here, we wouldn't have that. And then we're not gonna have anything output to the output of the window because we don't have it there. So that's how you would build a companion object inside of your Kotlin class. You use the companion object keywords, open and close curly braces, and any functions and properties that are inside of here are class level, and it's basically singleton scoped.